so I wanted to create a simple animation to test the performance of my upgraded computer. Now I have a i7 14700KF at 3.4 GHz, 64 GB of RAM DDR5, and of course my beautiful 1490. For this project, I wanted to create a more nature type of environment with grass, scrubs, hills and mountains around. That would change from my usual city type scene. Note that I don't like them anymore, it was just about mixing the pleasure. So in this video, I will show you my workflow and the different steps I've been through. If you need more details on specific item, don't hesitate to ask me in the comment section. In Blender, let's delete the default cube and import our car. If you need a car, you can use my C63 AMG. It's totally free and ready for animation. The link will be in the description. So to import the car, I'll go in File, Append, you click on the car and Append. Now in Object, you select all the object by pressing A and Append again. To keep things organized, let's create a new collection, right click, new collection, and let's name it ND like not needed. So you select everything starting with WGT, M to move, and ND to move in this collection. And now you can deactivate this collection by clicking here. Okay, cool, now let's take care of the ground. And before that, please allow me one minute for this quick shout out. Hello everyone, and welcome to the ride, my Blender car animation course created for beginners and intermediate users who want to get into car animation. I'm so proud to present this project. It's more than 64 videos and 11 hours of training. And today I can finally share it with you. In this course, you are going to cover all the topics you need to master in order to create your own 3D projects, such as environment design, lighting, animation, camera animation, camera framing for TikTok, Instagram or YouTube short, smoke simulation, <laughs> DaVinci Resolve, sound effects, and the list goes on. I will also provide all the necessary assets that you need to follow along. My updated city pack with skyscrapers, city props, and 22 new buildings that you can use in all your animations. HDRI magic to create realistic animations in a few clicks. And with the collaboration of Ashworth Cars, 3D Shaker, and Zephyr 3D, you will also get this C63 AMG, this OD RS5, this Corvette C8, and this beautiful Mustang. Yes! Everything is included in this course. Uh, shift A, Mesh and Plane. You press N, you go in Item. Let's change its size to 60 meters, X and Y. At the moment, this uh, main ground is just uh, one face and we will need more details later to add some bumps. So let's uh, subdivide it now. You select the plane. You go in Edit Mode by pressing Tab. Right click, Subdivide. And in this little window, you change the number of cuts to 100. Cool, now we have many details to play with. In the layer section, you press a C to create a new collection and you name it Grounds. Let's rename our plane to a main ground. You press M with the main ground selected to move it and you move it to Grounds. This is just to keep things organized. And before we create more grounds, let's define our camera framing. So you move your mouse on this corner until you have this crosshair and you drag it on the side like this and you repeat this process one more time to split this window in two. And to have a clean view, I'll deactivate the overlays and gizmo and press zero to go in camera view. If you have the tools, you can press T to hide them. And I like to have those black bars around my camera and for that you go in camera you click on the camera icon and here in viewport display, you set the passport out to one. And for the resolution, I like to have a cinematic resolution. So I have my Y to 816. Then you come back on this window, you press N, you go in view and be sure to have the camera to view untick. You press N again and you hold the control and middle mouse button. You move up and down until you have the camera view filling all the window. Then you press N again and this time in view we want to tick the camera view because we want to adjust our camera view and you adjust your framing until you have something like that or something you like. Okay, now we can continue with the grounds. In the same collection, let's add another plane. So Shift A, Mesh and Plane. Let me move it around, so G and Shift Z. And this time we will go for 200 meters. We'll move this plane around here. 
If you don't see the plane in your camera view, maybe you will have to update the end value. So here you click on your camera and for the clip end, you update it to 1000 meters. For this new ground, let's create uh, some subdivision as well, something like 80. And let me show you the idea of uh, how you're going to create those hills. So in edit mode, you activate the proportional editing here, this little icon. You select a point and you press uh, G. We'll mouse down to raise the size of this circle and up for the opposite effect. Z to move this point along the Z axis. And when you will move your mouse, you will create this little hill. And you can repeat this process. You can change the size of the circle until you have something you like. And this is pretty much how you will create those hills. And let me show you my final version. Don't worry about the texture for now. We'll talk about this in a sec. So for those hills, I've created three other planes of uh, different sizes. So this one is around 200 meters, one, uh, 115 and uh, 170. And I did exactly the same. You select a point and you raise it until you have something you like in your framing. And here I messed up a bit, but don't worry, it will be fixed when we will add uh, some shrubs. Okay, that's it for the hills. Now let's take care of the decoration and we will start with the grass. For the grass, I'm using the botanic add-on. And let me show you what's cool about this add-on with this example. So I select the plane where I want to put the grass and I choose the type of vegetation I want. In this case, this one. So you just click on it and boom, just like that, you have this vegetation scattered on the plane. Although you can play with the density, maybe you don't want the grass to be all over the place like this. So if we check the final example, my final result, you can see that I have holes everywhere and I think it's giving a more organic touch to the ground and for that you have this function here paint density where you can paint where you want the grass to be so you just like that you indicate where you want the grass and this is how i did my scene using this function here you can change the radius for example to 20 to fill the small gaps and if you want to remove some grass here you just click on subtract you can change the radius again if you want, and boom. And here is the final result for my project using this method. And the cool thing is, not only the add-on is adding the grass, but if I go back in object mode now, now you can see that you also have some material applied for you on the floor. And concerning the grass and the shrubs, if you don't have the botanic add-on, you can use this free library, the plant library. It's a great free alternative. You'll have everything you need. You can manually scatter and weight pen the assets as well. And it also works great with the Blender Asset Browser. The main difference with the botanic add-on is you'll have fewer assets to play with and you will have to do everything manually, but at least it's free. Okay, now we can implement the grass on the other grounds as well, but this time we don't need the weight paint as it's pretty far from the camera. So I just scattered the grass with the add-on with an emission number of 50,000. And I did the same for the three planes. If your viewport is starting to slow down, you can just turn off the display of the grass by clicking on this button. Of course, the grass will be rendered in the final output. This is just so you can continue to work smoothly. And now I realize that I forgot to motion it earlier. So let's create a focus point for our camera. Shift A, you go in empty and plane axis. Let me raise it a bit and let's change the name to focus. I will move it in the main collection, so collection. Let's place this focus point where we want the focus to be. So I press seven on my numpad and I think I want it around uh, here. Then with the focus point selected, you hold the shift, you click somewhere on the car, control and P to parent it to the car and object keep transform. So it will now follow the car when we will create the animation. Okay, let's go back to the decoration. Now we can add the shrubs on the distant hills. And like the grass, I just scattered some scrubs on the plane. And to reuse the scattering system on different planes, you click on the plane and here you select the system you want to apply. But if you use this method, you have to know that the system will be the same for all planes. So if you need to alter a parameter for a specific ground, you have to click on this icon so your changes will only be applied for this object. 
All right, so we are done with the hills. Let's go back to the main ground. Currently, we only have grass, but I think it will look much better if we add a bunch of different assets. That's why I manually placed different plants and rocks. Everything comes from the botanic add-on, but you will find equivalent assets in the plant library. I did add some rocks as well on the hills just to display some diversity. And like the grass, I like to place those items manually because I want to control where to display play them in my framing. Now concerning the car animation, just in case you're new around here, let me show you how I did that. First for the orientation, let's have the minus Y on this side. Later, that will be mandatory if you want the rigor car add-on to work properly. Let me hide this ground for the moment. So shift A, curve and path. The idea is we will attach the car to this path and we will use it to drive the car. You click on the path and minus 90 degrees for the Z rotation. If you're not sure that your path is correctly oriented, select the path and go in edit mode by pressing tab. And here in curve edit mode, you display the normals, right? So now you can see with those little arrows, the orientation of the path. Let's scale it a bit by pressing S and scale like that. Now we can attach the car to this pass. So you click on the rig here, you go in pause mode, control and tab. With the blue rig selected, this one, you click on this blue bone, bone constraints. You click here, you choose follow path. You select the path, so this one. Your car will be attached to the path now. You check follow curve because that's what we want. Fix position. This way, the offset factor will only go from zero to one. That will be much easier for us to animate the car. The forward axis, as we said, is minus Y. And if your car is like that, not directly on the path, you can fix that. You click here in object and you put zero everywhere in the location. Now, if I change the offset factor to one, the car will stay on the path. From there, you can go back in object mode and play with the path. So you click on it and tab. If you want, you can add a curve. So you select a point on the path and G and X, for example, and like this. If you're happy with the path, you click on it and control A and apply all transform. This is a very important step because if you don't do that, you might see some deformation on your car. So don't forget to apply the transform. Now for the animation, let's go back on the rig. Control tab to go back in pause mode. You select the blue rig. And let's say you want to start at frame one. So here, with the mouse over the offset factor, you press I on your keyboard. That will insert a keyframe on your timeline. And let's say you want, uh, I don't know, 150 frames to do this animation. You go on frame 150 and you change here the offset factor to one and you do the same I on your keyboard. Here you will have an acceleration and a deceleration at the end. Okay, That's what we want for this specific animation. And now if we automatically want to animate the wheels and the steering, you will have to use the rigger car add-on and the link will be in the description. You install the add-on as usual. So edit preferences add-ons, install, and you search for the add-on. You need to use my version of the add-on because it's fixed for Blender 4. The name will be something like Rigger Car Joyant 3D Fix V2 version 2. Okay, you install the add-on. Be sure that the add-on is activated by checking this checkbox. And normally, if you click on the blue rig and you press N on your keyboard, you will have the add-on displaying here, Rigger Car. From there, all you have to do is to click on Bake Car Steering. Okay, and bake wheel rotation. And just like that, the animation is done. And let me show you my final result. I think it's about 250 frames and I wanted a very slow uh, animation. And I did this little break animation at the end. If you want to do the same, I will put the link of uh, my video where I explain how I did that. And now let me show you something concerning the ground. If you check the animation in this window, you will see that the ground is not flat. My car is going down and a little bit up. At the start, I made a ground very flat and it was very boring to, to look at. The animation was very boring. And chances are in this type of environment, you will have bumps and uh, holes everywhere. So I think it's adding to the realism of the scene. That's why I added some bumps everywhere to have this car animation going up and down. And if your car is not reacting 
to the change you made to the ground, it's because you have to activate its sensors. So you click on the rig, and here you press N, you go in the rig car, and for the ground sensors, you select plane everywhere. I mean, you select the main ground or, or whatever name you have. You will have to do that for all the different sensors. This way, your car will react to the modification you made to your ground. Okay, that's it for the car animation. Now for the main light, I'm using a HDRI. Like most of my projects, I'm using the SceneSkies HDRI pack. It costs 12 bucks, but frankly, this is one of the best investments I made. So I can choose between different collections and I did select the forest one and this one. Then I did a rotation of 254 degrees because I wanted the mountains around here and I did love the position of the clouds as well. But you don't have to use this add-on. You can grab free HDRIs on polyhaven.com, for example. I will put the link in the description. For the headlights, I use uh, spotlights. So shift A, light, and spot. I went for yellow color and a power of 5,000 watts. Along with those settings, I duplicated the spots with Alt D and attached both to the car like we did for the focus point. Then I've created some fog because I wanted the beam lights to be clearly visible and add a creamy atmosphere. For that, you just create a cube and you display it as wire here in view play disport object view play disport wire. And then for the shading, I've created a principal volume connected to the volume with those settings. And then you change the size of the cube to be sure that it's big enough to cover everything you want to be in the fog. And that's pretty much it for the fog. For the render settings, of course, I use cycles and max samples are 2048. The motion blur is activated. I already gave you my resolution and I did choose a PNG and that's it. The project has a total of 380 frames. And for your information, it took about 12 to 15 seconds to render each frame. Finally, I did a bit of color grading in DaVinci Resolve and add some grains. And voila, the project is done. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this video. Don't hesitate if you have questions. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.